tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Computer animation. Computer animation. Let's get started with animation. Hi folks, today I want to talk about a special effect which uh, sort of mimics this is this kind of is aesthetics of the techno world of the 1990s and early 2000s. You have basically a very dark clubbing background and all of a sudden a flashlight lights the scene pretty bright and then darkens the scene again and we see that flashlight right here. Uh, René Passé did this photograph uh, like all the others here. You have the same thing here. Very harsh flashlight and the background is dark. It just shows motion and uh, everything is frozen in space. I want to mimic this effect in Maya and it's done very simply with a spotlight, which is pretty obvious. And uh, the spotlight in my scene is here. Why is it so small? Because I chose the dimensions of this character animation quite big. I uh, usually go to Windows, Settings, Preferences and Preferences. And here in the middle are the settings and I set the working units to meter. The default is centimeters. But since character animation comes in dimensions of meters, so she's one and a half meter high maybe, or a little bit higher. Uh, that's why we have these dimensions here. They are ideal for character animation, but all the uh, icons uh, are um, turning up very small in this context. So this is my one and only light here. These three things I have to do with a character, and i just show you how to get there. You import the character from Windows, General Editors, Content Browser. And here under Animation, you find the Rig section, the Rigs folder. And here is Jana rigged. You see that rigging icon here. That means she does have a skeleton, so we don't have to implant a skeleton into her. So that's the first step. And the second step is I chose a character animation for her. And uh, you can do this by going back to the general editor content browser and go into motion capture, FBX, and here you find lots of, uh, actually not lots of, but maybe 20 uh, character animations, just the skeletons, and you can then implant that motion into her. And I'll show you how that works, but uh, first of all, I'll show you how I, I did it. I uh, chose the Rococo Motion Library. Where do you find it? It's under Animation here, under, let me minimize it again. Um, it's under Windows and the Animation Editors and down here is the Motion Library. That's uh, what I was talking about, what I am talking about. And here it is. And I chose this for the price of zero dollars, this motion. I put it in my shopping basket and I checked out, checked out and then I imported it just by clicking here into Maya. This is just one of I guess hundreds of motion capture data which you can use. They're in excellent quality and Rococo the company has a, a an excellent expertise in character animation. Uh, it lands here and when you go to this tab here Human IK you see that I fed Jana, that's her, with a skeleton uh, with the source of the character. It's called character, which comes from Rococo. Before that, she just had that control rig, which puts her in a T-pose. You don't see her right arm because uh, I have a plane there. But uh, let's go back to the character. So at frame 341, in my case, uh, she has that pose here. I chose the spotlight, I can actually select it here and middle mouse drag it into this view. So I go back to um, Control 
A, which brings back the attribute editor, and here you see the exposure in Arnold. You have the intensity here, which is uh, which I didn't change, but down here is Arnold, and in Arnold you need for the spotlight you need a high exposure in order to see anything, see something. So let's move back here to the perspective one, and that's uh, just as a pose which I quite like. She moves uh, drastically uh, with her arms and not so much with the legs. So I'm at frame 341 currently and I want to stay there and uh, I want to render this view and I already did it and it looks like this. So I already have this flashlight compact camera scenery here with the sharp shadow in the back. Now I can enhance this a little bit and uh, that's uh, what I really enjoy showing you. Uh, there are two things here. One is the motion blur. The motion blur can be found under the render settings. That's this icon here. When I open the render settings I have the common tab and the Arnold render tab. And uh, in the common tab I have motion blur somewhere but uh, we don't use it anymore. It's the well antique Maya motion blur. We use Arnold renderer motion blur and down here you find the motion blur section and when you enable it you see that uh, she is dra moving drastically. That's because I chose a length of 10. If I reduce this to 2, it's much less. But I like to stay at 10. And what you don't see now is the drastic effect of that flashlight. But you see a drastic motion. And that's where the blades come in. They simulate a different effect which comes from a rolling shutter. I don't want to get into this. I did a tutorial about this quite a while ago actually. And you don't find a rolling shutter under in the render settings. You find them in the attributes of the camera. So I need to pick the perspective camera here. And you have to search and search and search until you find it. And that's why I'm here and I'm telling you where to search for it. You go all the way down and here you find woof, an Arnold section. And the Arnold section tells me the camera type is a perspective. Uh, with that exposure, that uh, doesn't matter here. And here we have the rolling shutter, which is currently shut off. When I enable it to, well, say the top, I get this image here, which does not look motion blurred at all, but it uh, looks quite nice and it looks a little bit different because she's in a different pose than she was before because I have a shutter working and now I change the rolling shutter duration. Let me type in 10. And now you see you have this techno flashlight effect. Now you can change the top to the bottom. That's nice too. And left and right. A look at the shadow, how the shadow is being affected by that motion by and by the rolling shutter. If you're interested in how the rolling shutter technically works, go to Wikipedia and uh, maybe to the Arnold documentation, which is uh, a little bit leaner than the Wikipedia, which tells you a lot about that lens effect. Well, with this, I leave you for now and have a nice day. Bye bye.